Flying with my sister. This is a book I wrote with scientist and designer Claire Sives. For years, my sister Nadia wrote directions for a film. Before she died, I worked with her to start the film, Flying with my sister, and the animation, and Can You Turn Me? The film combines stories and art by people who cared for Nadia. The animation traces and transforms words recurring in Nadia's writing. I showed the film to writer Carmel Bird. She suggested, in the interest of the story itself, you probably need to be much more explanatory. I wrote an explanation and she wrote back, a brilliant piece of writing that probably needs to be available in printed form, standing alone. So I asked designer and scientist Claire Sives to consider co-authoring a picture book. Claire writes, when Lisa invited me to collaborate in creating a digital artwork to honour the life of her sister, I was thrilled, both for the opportunity to reconnect with Lisa, my dear friend, and to travel with her on a journey of grief and celebration for her sister Nadia. It has been an absolute privilege and joy to be part of this project, which tells the story of Nadia's life. Thank you, Lisa, for allowing me to be part of this and I hope that my visual interpretation does justice to everyone's memories of Nadia. I'm going to tell you about my sister Nadia, writer, artist, dancer, joker, oldest resident of what was once called Beechworth Lunatic Asylum in Beechworth. Born in Melbourne in 1946, Nadia lived all her adult life as a ward of the state of Victoria. She died this year of lung cancer at 75. Our mother, Jean Ralston, was a tailor and an artist. During World War II, She sewed army trousers and army tents. She made costumes for J.C. Williamson's theatre company. She did alterations for wealthy women in fashion salons in Turak. Nadia was the child of Jean's first marriage to Peter Carver. He was an actor known for his role in the ABC TV series The Yarns of Billy Borker. My father, Noel Roberts, told me he met Jean at a party. He said she reminded him of his wartime lover Elise, after whom I was named. Elise was a French Tahitian woman Noel knew from working as a radio operator on ships carrying munitions. Noel showed me a tiny photo of Elise, dressed in a sarong, sitting on a beach. In the photo she is smiling and holding a coconut, like an offering to my father the photographer. Nadia and I grew up together. We first lived together on Norfolk Island, where I was born. Noel was working there to establish radio communication systems after the war. There's a story from a local that Jean and Noel were the Bohemians of the island and that they set fire to a Norfolk Island pine at a beach party. There's a photo of Nadia under an arch of whale bones, sitting behind a boy on a rocking horse. When Jean married Noel, Nadia became a Roberts. Soon after I was born, we moved to Christchurch, New Zealand. Noel's job was to install radio communication systems at Harewood Airport. Grandma Roberts, Nora, came to visit and took Nadia to live for a time with her and Grandpa Kay, Caleb Roberts, in their house in Melbourne. Nora and Kay's house was full of paintings by Kay's father, the artist Tom Roberts. Pictures of people in fine clothes, pictures of family and friends, pictures of Australian bush. 
Nadia told me that Nora and Kay taught her to read and write. It's likely they also encouraged her drawing. When Nadia returned to Christchurch, she and I were inseparable. We lived in a government housing estate inside the airport. Noel was home every day for breakfast, lunch and tea. For me and Nadia, there was space and freedom to explore. Planes moved close around us. We felt earthquakes. We watched Queen Elizabeth and her Duke drive by on their tour of the colonies. We stood waving flags, our tiny feet in tiny shoes, with socks trimmed with crowns, machine embroidered. For us, life was fun, but chaotic. Noel and Jean shouted and threw things at each other. Noel wanted us to call him and Jean by their first names. For us, Noel was always Noel, but I followed Nadia's lead and called Jean Mum. Noel named me Elise after his wartime lover, but ever since Nora's visit, I was called Lisa. Nora was a formidable matriarch. Mum encouraged our drawing and painting. I don't have any memories of her reading to us. Nadia and I drew on walls, inside and outside our little airport house. We drew with charcoal from the hearth. Sometimes we drew with soft lead pencil we found in Noel's workshop. Noel would yell at us to scrub it off. We collected travel brochures from the airport lounges and stuffed them down ventilators in the nearby buildings. We stamped and broke up ice that formed on puddles. We climbed up onto the back of a fire truck that suddenly took off and the driver, unaware of us, clinging on. We swam in the long, shallow pool used for washing fire hoses. One day, Noel stood with us on the flat airport ground, drawing in the air the curve of the earth. He explained that England was directly under us. Nadia and I enlisted a small boy called Graham to dig with us, to make a hole, to get to England. In 1954, we sailed by ship across the Tasman Sea to Melbourne. We moved into Talisman, the house in Callista, in the Dandenong Ranges, designed by our great-grandparents, Tom Roberts and Lily Williamson. In Talisman, we were not living so much on top of each other as we were on Harewood Airport. Rooms were arranged around a central chimney. Around the house was a garden with Tom's studio at one end. Sherbrooke Forest was a short walk away. Noel was away most of the day, doing what he loved, building and fixing radios on ships, leaving early to work in Melbourne and coming home after dark calling in on his mother and other people he liked. Mum was the happiest I'd ever seen her, working as an artist in Bill Onis's studio, Aboriginal Enterprises, expressing herself in ways she could not before. Mum was curious and proud of her Aboriginal ancestry, like her Uncle Bill was. But her mother Phoebe wasn't. She spun a story that she was Maori. Phoebe banned all talk, about our history. Nadia and I grew up in a family divided in ways we couldn't understand. We did what we liked. We listened, but we didn't take sides. Nadia's father, Peter Carver, came to Talisman once with his mother to meet Nadia. I saw them ceremoniously present to Nadia a doll in a long white box with a clear plastic lid. Its hard moulded head had hair painted on, like the cut for a boy. Its rag body was dressed in blue velvet pantaloons and a beret, like an artist. Nadia called it Pandora. Nadia screamed and demanded real hair for the doll. Mum found a wig and glued it on Pandora. Nadia and I would spend hours on our own in Callista or with Mum in Tom's studio, drawing, painting and making things from scraps. 
We shared a bedroom, and at night we would talk before we slept. We imagined the branches tapping on our window were creatures from the stories that Noel read to us. The Violet Fairy Book, Wind in the Willows, The Magic Pudding, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Nadia loved birds. She asked for two budgies, a blue one and a gold one. Mum bought them for her and a cage. Very soon Nadia opened the cage door and let them out. She said she wanted them to be free. Nadia and I last lived together in Glen Waverley, in a house Noel had built with a war service loan. Kay gave Noel his green Holden car, so we could travel in comfort as a family. Our brother Tom was born in 1958. No safety belts in those days. Once Nadia pushed me as we drove along and I clung to the handle of a swinging back car door. When Nadia was around 15, she was approaching men for sex, in our street and in the local pub. It was then that she was assessed by the psychiatrist Jeff Godding and diagnosed with schizophrenia. Jeff introduced family therapy to Australia. He also worked as a superintendent at the Beechworth Lunatic Asylum and invited residents to staff meetings to discuss how they wanted to spend their leisure time. He enabled them to form clubs where they could do what they liked. Arts, crafts, reading, writing, performing, gardening and so on. I remember a family meeting with Jeff at the Bouvry Clinic in Melbourne. After some talking with us all, he invited me to play by myself in the hall. The hall had colourful stained glass windows high on the walls. At one end of the hall was a stage with velvet curtains. I danced with the lights that cast colour from the glass onto the floor. One day, Nadia was taken from Glen Waverley to be a ward of the state. She then lived in different places around Victoria, in institutions that have changed their names over time. Arundel Mental Asylum in Bandura, Arradale Mental Hospital, Ararat, Special Accommodation in Wodonga, Beechworth Lunatic Asylum, Mayday Hills, Gilchrist Avenue, Willows, Blackwood and Beechworth. My brother Tom remembers Nadia coming to stay and asking Mum if she could come home for good. In the months before she died, I got closer to Nadia than ever. I saw her most days and we shared memories. We agreed that our family included all the people who have cared for us and that here we both were, in a sense, home together for good. Now telling this story, I learn even more about her world from the many other people who cared for Nadia. I'm telling this story for my family and other people to celebrate relationships that make us who we are. Over the years, Nadia wrote letters to our grandfather, Kay. The letters are directions for the production of a film she wanted Kay to make and to show to Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh. I wanted to follow Nadia's directions, but the directions are not clear. Her letters reflect a freely associating creative mind. Colourful, textured, rhythmic scenes transform. Characters turn into each other and herself. No line appears to separate them. Is it a paradox or is it logical that I use line animation to make sense of my sister's writing? I honour Nadia's writings through the creation of the short animation, Can You Turn Me? which is followed by a short film honouring the joy of connections that Nadia made in her life, Flying With My Sister. When she died, I posted a call for stories about Nadia to the Beechworth Community Facebook page. Generations of her carers responded. I also received by mail.
heartfelt works of art that serve as messages from people who made them to be shared. So this story is an animated mix of my experience of Nadia, fragments from her film directions, family stories and photos passed down, Facebook messages and works of art.